Joining me this week are Jenny Davidson from Holyrood magazine and the former political correspondent for the Press Association, Jennifer McKeonan. Uh, well, Jennifer, um, f first of all about Labour, which way do you think they're going to jump? We've had Len McCluskey from the Unite Union on this programme today saying he thinks Labour should just go for a general election. But others in Labour are trying to redefine, aren't they, the, the idea of taking br no deal off the table to say, oh, well, it doesn't just mean the European Union giving us an extension. It means somehow taking it off the table even at the end of January. Yeah, so it looks like Labour's moving away from this idea that they're, they're, um, they might vote, they might back um, Boris Johnson and, and go for an early election. Um, and the, the issues around the possible no-deal trapdoors um, have now broadened out, so um, people are worried about... Um, a no deal perhaps coming along in, uh, in, in the wake of a general election as Parliament tries to get set back up again. And again, that, that idea of uh, that there's a trapdoor in December 2020 as well, um, where potentially by, by accident or by design, the Tories' um, point of view, um, the UK could still leave without a deal. That's what Labour wants to see taken off the table in order for them to back any kind of general election. Uh is that going to wash, Jenny, do you, do you think? I mean, because, look, I mean, people, possibly including Len McCluskey, will say, well, look, hang on a minute, you fight a general election, you win it, Labour can do what they like. They can have a new deal, they can put it to a, a referendum, whatever they want. This idea that you've got to tie the hands of a future Tory government rather implies Labour don't think they can win a general election. Well, it doesn't look like they can win at the moment. I mean, as John Curtis was saying, they're, they're lagging well behind in the polls. Um, and while that was the case um, in the previous general election as well, but Jeremy Corbyn had, you know, a great case and he could really sell things and, and you know, new policies and, and get new voters behind him. I don't think that's the case this time. They're not going to have that kind of same bound. So it's, it's pretty certain Labour are not going to win this general election. The question is purely really whether Conservatives get their outright majority they're looking for or whether we end up with basically voting in a similar situation to what we have we just now. Yeah, Jennifer, I, but, but that point about is Labour's position going to be credible? Because their opponents will say, if you really believe you can win a general election as you say you can, all this, stuff, all this talk about what might happen in December 2020 is irrelevant. Win an election, get your new deal with Brussels, put it to a public vote and either get stay in the European Union or get your deal through. The, only, the implication of Labour's line now, as it's emerging, is they're trying to tie the hands of a Tory government in the future because they don't think they can win. Sure, yeah. Um, there's definitely an issue um, for Labour MPs who, and Jeremy Corbyn himself who have been shouting so vociferously for a general election now to be stepping back and saying actually it's not quite the right time. That's a very difficult position for them to be taking in the eyes of the public. Um, and yet to a great extent I think Labour and Jeremy Corbyn has squandered um, the, the goodwill that they did have um, by their continual refusal to, to come up with a, a credible Brexit stance. You know, they've been sitting on the fence for so long and only recently have, have, have come forward with, with something that actually seems to make sense. Um, and really, when we're going into a general election like this, we know that it's going to be a de facto um, Brexit referendum again. Um, so it is going to be very difficult for Labour to put forward any of those policies that they, they want to push, um, because all eyes are going to be on their, on their Brexit stance. Um, Jenny, the, the, this cunning plan that the Liberal Democrats have, have come up with, backed by the SNP, in fact, uh, apparently Nicola Sturgeon has been tweeting this morning uh, the, the gist of it, being that, that they're backing this Liberal Democratic plan, doing nothing, she says, allows Johnson to get his bad deal through with Labour support, or even worse, run down the clock to the end of January, when no deal becomes a real risk all over again. But, but is that, I mean, short of support from the Conservatives um, or Labour, that plan isn't really going to go very far, is it? No, it's not. The two of them... The two parties can't get that through the Lib Dems and SNP. It makes sense for both of them. Both of them would benefit from an election um, now, you know, sooner or later, actually before Christmas, after Christmas, either way, both are expected to make gains. So, I mean, they're, they're the ones that have every kind of advantage in a general election and they're quite happy just to go for it regardless. Um, but, yeah, they would need to get either Labour or the Tories behind them and it doesn't look now that, that either of those parties are going to back their call for an election and... It's the 9th of December, I think. Um, let's change the subject. Ruth Davidson, her new job with a lobbying company, and she's been quite vociferously defending herself and saying she went through all the proper procedures. Will it wash? I don't think so, no. I mean, in terms of, you know, it may well follow the proper procedures in, in terms of she can't be you know, she can't get into trouble for it um, in terms of official channels. 
But in terms of the, the way this looks, the, the kind of the negative PR, the stories about this and, and the, the number of questions that are going to come up in Parliament. Um, and obviously, Neil Finlay, Labour MP Neil Finlay is, is pushing anyway for um, a ban on MPs having, MSPs having second jobs. And this is just giving more impetus to that. So he's obviously Je going okay. to... Je Jennifer, I'm interested up. in what you make of this, because I know, given Ruth Davidson's prominence, it's had a bit of publicity down there. What's the, what's the view down there? Um, I think at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if, uh, if Ruth Davidson is not going to stand again. Um, but certainly, yeah, I mean, MPs in general are, are very aware of the, the idea that um, they, they, they don't want to be seen as sleazy or, or doing the wrong thing. Um, there's enough with the, with the sexual harassment scandals and the expenses scandals, never mind, um, you know, sitting, sitting politicians taking on jobs with lobbying firms. It, it leaves a very bad taste in the mouth and I don't think okay. it's very popular. Jennifer, Jenny's already said she doesn't think Labour can win, but uh, very briefly, if I could put you, what the, Jeremy Corbyn's argument would be was, well, I was in this position last time and, I, and look, what I, look how well I did, I can do a bit better this time. Sure, um, I think that's... We've got less fate this time around, um, but of course, and um, people love an underdog. Okay. Um, people Sorry, don't like Boris Johnson. We're, we're going to have to leave it there. We're completely <laughs> out of time. That's all we've got time for this week. Uh, I'll be back again next Sunday. Until then, goodbye.